Sacred geometry is geometry, as most people know, with the additional component of there being a, a symbolism or a, and a philosophy behind it um, that is you don't find in Euclidean geometry so much. Euclidean geometry is your definitions, your axioms, your propositions and proofs and all of that. Well, all of that is part of sacred geometry, but in sacred geometry, we also get into the idea of there being symbolical meaning to the numbers. And the other part of it is, is that the sacred geometry, you don't even have to call it that, but what you do see is that across the spectrum of nature, um, all phenomena manifest geometry. Uh, so if you look at the molecular level, you'll see geometry at work. If you look at the cosmic or astronomical level, you'll see geometry at work. Look at the human level. You know, uh, most people that are at least semi-educated about this kind of material know of the golden section, right? The go also known as the divine proportion, you know, was used by Leonardo da Vinci and others mm -hmm. going back to the Middle Ages. The diagram of the human body. Yeah. And the human body is a repository of the the divine proportion, as it's been called, the golden ratio. Um, and to put it simply, imagine that you have a line. You, this is the simplest two-dimensional manifestation of it. Draw a line, and now you divide that line into two parts. If you divide it in the middle, now both sides of that line are the same length. And it's a very static situation. You, you, nothing really, you, you can't get any uh, additional properties out of that that you could use uh, in processes of growth, for example. You need to have an asymmetry because now as soon as you have the asymmetry, now you have, see if you have a line that's divided in the middle, that's very static. Artists know that, right? So in the Sacred geometry, what you're doing is an asymmetrical division of a line in the one and only point where you create a proportional relationship between the length of the whole line, the longer segment, and the shorter segment. So in, in classes and lectures, I, I demonstrate this. It's much easier to grasp when you see it than just hearing about it. And I am actually in the process of creating a new level of sacred geometry courses primarily aimed at home, the homeschool, the, the massively growing homeschool movement. Mm. Um, because I, I used to teach this, I did many years of teaching these principles to homeschooling classes of kids from the age of typically 9 to 17. Oh, wow. And discovered that when you incorporate the ideas of sacred geometry, it becomes 100 times more interesting than just your standard boring proofs and propositions and things so yeah but let's get back to that line okay an asymmetrical line where the ratio of the small section to the large section is the same as the large section to the whole line does that make sense mm -hmm. so if you have a line and you divide it asymmetrically and you call the long length a the short length b and the whole length c in this case, C is, if you picture, can be the sum, will be the sum of A plus B, won't it? Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, now let's go, we can take it either from the large to the small or the small to the large. Let's say the ratio, ratio of B over A is the same as A over C. The short is to the long as the long is to the whole or the sum of the two. So you could say... As, as short B is to long A, long A is to A plus B. And that's the basic mathematical expression of the golden section. And then when you solve that, you find out that it has a value of 1.618, 0, et cetera. It goes out forever just like pi. Okay. Now that ratio uh, is the ratio found ubiquitously throughout the natural world, like I said, it's um, uh, it's it's particularly uh, associated with processes of growth. It's very much manifest in human anatomy. So, Danny, if you take your cubit, which is elbow to fingertip, mm -hmm. right there, built into your anatomy, is the ratio I was just talking about. So, hold up your forearm like this. 
Now feel around on your wrist and you will find that there's a little space in your wrist joint. You can feel it. See, yep. look, my thumb is in that space. It's yep. called the space of desktop. Okay, so now imagine that line is your forearm from fingertip to elbow. And that asymmetrical division is marked by that space right there. So now look what you get. Small is to large as the large is to your whole cubit, which is elbow to fingertip. So right there. It's right there. If you look at your fingers, you see, look at, look at the digit of your mid, middle finger, Danny. Mm -hmm. You start right here. You've got a joint right there. Mm -hmm. Now you'll notice the next joint is longer, isn't it? Yes. And then from, from the middle of your finger to your knuckle, that progression is in the golden ratio. So the small to the large, the large is to the next larger, and then from there to the space of death dot, right? And then from there to your whole cubit. Now, do this. If you turn your forearm horizontal, and this is, you're standing on the floor, and this is the top of your head, then this space of death dot would coincide with your navel. So again, it's the scale invariant relationship, and those are just a few examples. Um, you know, your navel is not the middle of your body. Right. However, when you're born, it pretty much is the middle of your body. But as you grow, you grow into the divine proportion until you reach adulthood. Now imagine this. Think about the proportions of an infant. Um, now imagine if you took an infant with those proportions, the size of their head, the, 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 the distance that their navel divides their body, and you enlarge that to the size of a full, a full grown adult, and you saw that person walking down the street, you would think they looked strange, wouldn't you? A little bit, yeah. Yes, you would. Well, something from Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> So the thing is, you're growing into that ratio. You see what I'm saying? Um, and, yes. And everybody kind of. deviates a little bit. Everybody deviates. Nobody's perfect. Although there have been studies at looking at artist models and things like that. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, the further away you deviate from it, the more, I guess you'd say, idiosyncratic, to use a polite term, that you, you look. Um, mm -hmm. And... Uh, there have been studies done by artists and things looking at the proportions of the human face. Now, for example, if you do this, if you take, a, you make a rectangle and you use the short length as the short side of a rectangle and the long length as the long side, you now have a rectangle that would, is called a golden rectangle. That golden rectangle is frequently used to frame the composition of paintings, of architecture, um, Many, many things like that. Also, artists came to understand that that a golden rectangle will perfectly frame the face, hmm. the height. Because you notice if your face was as wide as your head was tall, again, you would look strange. Yes. Right? Right. So, and then you can divide that rectangle so if you if you think of this as a vertical rectangle, and I, I may have a slide of this, if you think if you've enclosed your head into a vertical rectangle, golden rectangle, then if you lop off a square, what's left is another golden rectangle. Oh. So the square defines your brow ridge like this. From your chin to your brow ridge would be a square. What's left over up here is another golden rectangle. But you can subdivide the features of the face according to the golden ratio. So you find it in your height, in the division of your navel. You find it in your forearm. It's, it's all manifest throughout the human body. But it's manifest in all realms of nature, particularly in growing things. And we find it in molecular. It's, it's very, it plays a very uh, important role in the geometry of the DNA molecule. Yeah, I mean, you, it, it's reflected in the in the the spiral helix yes. of DNA. Mm -hmm. uh, if you take a cross section of the molecule, if you cut it and you look at that cross section, you'll find it reflected in that. So it's I like the the golden ratios. I kind of think of it like to think of it as a as a as a constant of our of our in our universe. It's a right. universal constant That's that, a and 
you, you can go from the DNA, there's something that's you know the size of a, a molecule or a DNA helix up to the structures of galaxies. And you'll also see in that spiral structure of galaxies, the golden ratio is reflected in that as well. So it's, it's, it's like a natural constant. It's in nature, it's in life, as Randall says, like it's, it's expressed in nature, particularly in things that grow, but it's, it's also seems to be, it, it seems to be a constant in the very fabric or, or construction of of our universe, like it, right. the, the, from the smallest levels to the very largest. So it's it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a kind of a fundamental principle of reality. 